Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? While we fight undeclared wars in five countries across the Middle East, those in whose hands we have reposed the government don't even know how to run it. Tonight, the government, the coming government shutdown. Here we go again. The Democrats want to spend money like they did during the first two years of the Obama administration. And the president and his allies in Congress act like last fall's elections never even happened. The Republican leadership in the Congress is waging a battle on two fronts. The first is within the party itself, and the second is with the Democrats. There are many members of the House of Representatives who share the values of many of you who are regular Freedom Watch viewers. They are passionate about smaller government, sound money, no more borrowing, and fidelity to the Constitution. Ten years ago, there was only one Republican in the House who felt that way. His name is Ron Paul, a physician by training and a self-taught economist by passion. His patient explanations to anyone who would listen about the Fed and its money printing machine, the government and its endless borrowing, the Congress and its failure to do its jobs, and the danger of the entire federal government being out of control and outside the confines of the Constitution are now resonating with nearly one-third of all Republicans in the House. This group of defenders of the Constitution are telling the Speaker of the House, John Boehner, that the country is in a mood, and said so last November, to return to first principles and to return to the Constitution. Tugging at Speaker Boehner's left sleeve are the big government Republicans who've dominated the Republican congressional leadership for generations. They don't want deep cuts to the President's budget. They are not concerned with the fatal problems of too much debt. They are, as Churchill once said of an opponent, sheep in sheep's clothing. They want their own version of big government, and they want to trick you into thinking that they are for smaller government. How will this end up? I think the government will shut down on Saturday morning, and we will all go about our business of being Americans who care for ourselves. Except for the 47 percent, excuse me, 44 percent of Americans who receive money in some form from the feds. You see, America, the Democrats and the Republicans in prior Congresses and presidents as different as FDR and Reagan have all succumbed to the temptation to give away the store. More than one third of the money that the feds spend is simply transferring wealth from those who have to those who want. That is nowhere authorized in the Constitution. It is a theft of your property and it has created a huge class of folks, many very good folks, but who have grown to rely on those multicolored checks and soon cash cards and wire transfers from the taxpayers every month. I hope that the Republican leadership remembers why it runs the majority in the House of Representatives. It does so because millions of small government Tea Party voters elected dozens of small government Tea Party members to the House. Without them, we'd have Mrs. Pelosi and company running the show. And we all remember what that brought us. So what to do? Let the government close. It is the thunderbolt that the big government party, the folks that run the Democratic and Republican parties, need to recognize that we can all live a while without Big Brother. And spending needs to go down, and borrowing needs to stop, and the government needs to return to the confines of the Constitution. Short of that, if the Republicans cave and the government returns to business as usual, we will be slaves to those, domestic and foreign, to whom past Congresses and Presidents have mortgaged our future. Now a word about my friend Glenn Beck. I was preparing my notes for the interview we did earlier in the show when word came that he is planning to leave Fox at the end of this year. Glenn is a close friend, one of the hardest working folks in all the media, and one of the most intellectually honest as well. I had the privilege of joining him on speaking engagements in Orlando and Phoenix and Salt Lake City and in New York. And I've had the privilege of being a guest on his show here on Fox many times. And from time to time, next week in fact, I fill in for him. People often ask me, what is Beck like in private? He is just what you see. Passionate about individual freedom. Fearless about the truth. Generous to a fault. His word is his bond. His ability to hold an audience is unlike anyone I have ever seen. He'll still be here for the next nine months. He's only been here for two years. But in those two years, he has shaken the big government establishment. He has given hope to millions, and he has been a friend and mentor to your humble night watchman. I've been here for 13 years. He's been here for the last two. I almost can't remember or imagine what Fox was like without him. 
He has promised us he'll come back to Freedom Watch whenever we ask. God love you, Glenn Beck. From New York, defending freedom.